Welcome back to Cure Connections. We're talking about lung cancer and in this segment, we're focusing on some of the exciting advances in the management of advanced lung cancer. We've already talked about some of the advances in early lung cancer. Uh, Dr. Martin, you are involved in palliative care. We've talked a lot about medical advances, the new drugs, the new radiation protocols, the new imaging, but patients often struggle with the side effects of treatment. Um, where are we now compared to 10 years ago in side effect profile and are there improvements in how we manage patients' side effects of the treatment that we're giving them? Yes to both, I would say. So the newer, many of the newer agents tend to have less side effects for patients. Um, and then I think we're doing a much better job managing side effects overall, not only during treatment or preparing patients so that they don't get side effects, but also once treatment is complete. And there's just a lot more medications available for patients for control of common side effects. So nausea and vomiting, there's really no reason someone should have uncontrolled nausea and vomiting from their cancer or their treatment at this point. We know that these treatment options are available and we've done segments on Cure Connections addressing chemo-induced nausea and vomiting. And as you said, there's no reason why a patient should suffer with those. But isn't it important that we ask the right questions from patients to make sure that we check that they're not having these side effects. I mean, how easy is it for patients to get to the doctor if they feel these side effects on a Friday night and the office is closed for the weekend? Absolutely. I mean, I think as a cancer doctor, you have to be proactive in giving patients medications and doing good medication counseling on how to use those medicines when you have a symptom. It's not uncommon to meet patients that have a lot of medications at their disposal and don't know what to use when. I think the other thing and the nice thing about being a palliative care physician and working with oncologists is sometimes patients want to put on their best face for their cancer doctors. Sure. So they don't want to report some of their side effects because they're worried that their doctor, you know, everyone wants their doctor to like them and think that they're doing the right things and taking the treatment. So sometimes it's nice to have a third party removed that you can really just talk to about what's the symptoms that are bothering you and maybe get more treatment from that angle. We've talked about how to manage side effects when they appear, but I, I guess a large part of your job is educating the patient upfront of side effects right. that they may expect to have. Is that part of the initial consultation that you pre-warn patients of what to expect? Um, it can be a lot of specific side effects to treatments. I actually leave to the cancer doctors themselves because they're the ones prescribing the chemotherapy and are more knowledgeable of the exact side effects to expect. Um, as we talked about earlier, some side effects are universal, so fatigue tends to be universal, um, and most people will experience some loss of appetite. So we can talk upfront about general things to expect with anybody living with a serious illness with any treatment. If you think about it, when you have a stomach virus, you're tired and you don't want to eat a lot. And cancer is that times a thousand for a lot of patients. And you work in a team with nurse practitioners and palliative care nurses mm -hmm. that have the time to spend Correct. with patients to address these issues, yes? Correct. So I have a whole team of, pa of providers that work with me that are knowledgeable specifically on symptoms. Something is easy We've already talked about nausea and vomiting, but you know sometimes it's getting the right medicine at the right time to ensure that patients don't have that nausea and therefore do not vomit. Um, and sometimes patients just aren't aware which medicine to take when. Right. And it can be just and, easy education. And the caregiver has a huge role to play in Correct. helping report these symptoms and side effects that patients don't Correct. always volunteer Correct. themselves. Uh, you're involved with helping people in the community as well as in hospitals, yes? Correct. And with these newer agents, many patients are getting treatment as an outpatient, yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So does that mean if they're managing, their, if they're being given medications as an outpatient, do you think that a lot of these side effects are hidden because people are at home as opposed to when we were treating people in the hospital and we were rounding on them and seeing them every day? Um, I don't know that they're necessarily hidden. I think it probably depends on the degree of the side effect So, and, and the person. Some people will stay home and not talk about it, and some people call the minute 
you know, they get sick to their stomach. I think it just depends on the patient, but you have to be ready and available for patients and families, whatever their questions may be. The patient might not want the side effect reported, but the family member might really want to talk about right. what's happening and right. how do I deal with this. A lot of the side effects that you've mentioned, particularly with these newer treatments, are very non-specific. The fatigue, the nausea. Do you think that because these sim symptoms are symptoms that may be related to many medications, the treatment, the travel, the emotional exhaustion, does it, does it make it harder to treat because they're these non-specific it, symptoms? It certainly can, it certainly can. And I think that's where it's nice to have someone like a palliative care specialist that maybe has more time to really try and parse out with a patient and family really what's driving the symptoms. So maybe you're nauseated because you got sick with your first chemotherapy and now you're worried that your next chemotherapy is going to make you as sick, so you're already feeling sick before you even get the drug. And, and that's really, that's real, but right. that's anxiety. Right. Um, and so we need to treat that differently, that type of nausea, than nausea just from chemotherapy. Sure. And specialists are much more likely to home in on those issues right. than somebody who's not so familiar.